why uh, Night Thoughts? Where did that title come from? Uh, it, it's, I suppose it's a reference to, to kind of those moments when you're awake at four in the morning and uh, the world seems like a, 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 a kind of horrific, brutal, frightening pl place. I suppose there's lots of, lots of themes on the album to do with family and I think there's lots of uh, the sense of the title that it was a, a sort of, you know, f fear for, for, for things that can, go, that can go wrong in your life and about how when you love people so much, how if they were taken away from you, how how it would destroy you. So there's a lot, there's a lot of kind of like paranoid, sort of like disaster thinking connected with the title. And then the film, I thought it was interesting. It says this is a film about night thoughts, which was kind of it was almost a double meaning for you, Roger. Day. It's kind of a film about the album, but it's also about those themes as well. How does that work as a, the title for the for the filmed element? The film definitely kind of mirrors the album in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, a lot of the themes are, uh, are there, you know, as Brett explained just now. What was important for us as a general thing was that, you know, was, was to not kind of sit over Roger's shoulder and, and, and say, you've got it wrong, this, is, this, this film isn't about what I intended the song to be about. I generally love the idea of interpretation in music and in art generally. I love the idea that, that, that a piece of art can be interpreted by someone and it has just as valid a meaning by someone who reinterprets it uh, as, even as, as the writer. Uh, it was really important for us to Roger, for Roger to have his own vision based on, of course we sat down with him and said look these are the themes in the record, blah de blah de blah, but I didn't want it to be sort of slavishly connected to, 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 the, to the lyrics in the album. And so, in fact sometimes it drifts completely away from it and I really like that. One of the things I really loved about the film is it's you kind of conjure up a very swayed sort of world. Swayed have always been a group who have a universe to me and these characters within them. But it was kind of it was a swayed world, but not a swayed world. It was like somebody else's take on it, which I thought was really fascinating. You know, we made a few playful references in the film, but generally speaking, I I, th I just wanted it to to echo the conversations that I'd had with the band, and and then you know through the writing process, I wrote wrote the film with a, a writer called Stephanie De Giorgio. I think, you know, if you, if you, if you attempt to echo um, music in, in the truest sense, then it, can, it, it will inevitably have that feeling and that, you know, like you say, that world. Um, otherwise, you've not really done it justice. Again, I think if, we, if we'd have decided to, to, to carefully on the kind of the imagery and all of these things, it would have probably been a, a, a veered into self-parody. And the fact that it was Roger's interpretation kind of gives it uh, like a like a like a different like looking at it from the whole suede world thing from a different angle, I think, which is nice. I think it's also the other way round. You know, I mean, one of the reasons why we chose Roger is, you know, we looked at a lot of his videos, and immediately they kind of conjured up the kind of things that we like. You know, it, it, it wasn't a random choice. You know, things like the, the touch touch the leather video. We were all just kind of like, it feels like a yeah, that like could a, have been a suede video, like a suede it? sleeve yeah. or something. There's there's just something about it that's just so. You're kind of looking at it, and you almost want to look away, and it's kind of like, oh, that's just perfect. And I think we knew that Roger was always going to get the visual sense of the band very right. I even think of stuff like um, the sleeve to sci-fi lullabies, and it has exactly that kind of kind of ruined rural look, you know, that I think is it, it really suited the record. I think Touch the Leather is, is a video that we would have loved to have made if we weren't trying to get in the charts in the 90s. Exactly, yeah. What is, what is it, Roger, you like about these like, saucy bands like Libertine, Suede, Fat White Family? Saucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so saucy. Well, I think um, on, one, um, on one level, I don't have to... Um, they, they're the sort of bands that, you know, don't make rules, really. So I don't have to stick to any particular rules. So I think I always hate it when um, you've got record company people kind of le leaning over your shoulder and you know editing by proxy and all this sort of stuff so or editing by committee um, I think you just have so much more fun when did you first encounter the suede oh god um, probably 1994 at Glastonbury I was on acid and sat on the side of the stage <laughs> watching them that was the first time you probably yeah. were because we weren't playing in 1994. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, when, when did you play? 93. 93. 93. 93. <laughs> it was a long trip. <laughs> yeah, that was my first ever Glastonbury. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that, Brent.